you know, you never know what this thing's going to be turn out like. But uh, music speaks in all languages, so uh, um, I'm, I'm always got my ears open. Yeah. The Indian Pacific is one of the great train journeys of the world, but this trip is going to be a musical journey like no other. On board are throat singers from Tuva, a former Soviet Republic near Mongolia. Sounds from an ancient culture almost unheard of in the West. Remy on Gallery's band from Tanzania. Francis Bebe from Cameroon has brought the sound of the pygmy's one note flute. Archie Roach and Ruby Hunter with songs from Aboriginal Australia. We've produced more than 90 events over um, the years, over 15 years, in, a, in 19 different countries. And so it's, it just has, a, I think, a pocket of reputation in each of the places that the festival goes. But where it does go, I think we're val valued very positively. Is this the most bizarre event you've ever organised? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> can mix with people, the pressure's off, there's no phones, no television. It's, uh, I'd like to be here for a couple of weeks. Just keep travelling backwards and forwards. Just keep travelling, just keep playing guitar and meeting people and see what happens. Yeah, it's a great idea. Also on board is twice Grammy Award winner for Best Country Instrumental, Lucky Oceans and his ancient Dobro guitar. Since you've been gone, I got lucky. She just nodded her head and said, I guess. The organisers had hoped the trip would capture the public's imagination, but with a three-night sleeper, plane fares and concert costing more than $1,000, it soon became clear there were more musos and media on board than paying passengers. But really, in terms of getting a message of what WOMAD is all about across to a wider public, it's the media is, is, is I, I think, the... The obvious way towards a far larger number of people and really in all of this what we're trying to do is just allow people to remember WOMAD if they do already know about it if they don't just explain what it is a world of music arts and dance if a project as a whole aboard this train can just turn some more people onto these ideas for us that's enough <laughs> The train stopped just once on the Nullarbor, and for one passenger it became a magical moment where the language barrier disappeared with the breath from his didgeridoo. He heard me playing didgeridoo, he came into my room and he said he couldn't speak much English and I couldn't communicate with Boris, and he just started throat vocalising whatever he does, and I was playing didgeridoo and it sounded great. Well, this is it, beautiful downtown Pimba. We've travelled now about 2,000 kilometres from Perth. Adelaide's about 500 kilometres down that way, and it can be really described as the middle of nowhere. And tonight, world music will be put to the test at Spud's Roadhouse. Pimba holiday, Pimba, Pimba holiday, together, Pimba holiday, together, Pimba holiday, come on, Pimba holiday, Pimba. The eight-hour concert was a great success for the locals. More than a thousand had come from as far away as Alice Springs, with at least that number again from the Big Smoke. The event had lived up to WOMAD's dreams. The bizarre Bush concert had actually worked. Thank you very much. What promoters had in mind was using one of the great train journeys of the world as a performing platform for some of the world's most interesting musicians. This was not so much a jam session as a long distance dress rehearsal. As the Indian Pacific rolled across the Nullarbor, preparations were in full swing for a seven hour concert at this outback whistle stop at Pimba. Out front of Spud's Roadhouse, they were busy setting the stage. 
Inside, it was business as usual at one of the Stewart Highway's best-known watering holes. It's my friend's wife. <laughs> but I know him pretty well. Rodney Wilmshurst owns Spuds and pretty much everything else in Pimba. He's a publican, come road builder, and now an arts impresario. July last year, we had people approach us and ask if we wanted to do a show in the outback, and we sort of laughed at them, thought it was a bit of a, a joke. WOMAD convinced him they were serious and also convinced him to put up some serious money to make it all happen. Financially, uh, it's been a big risk. We hope to, we're getting a percentage of the gate taking so that we're going to recoup some of our money. Outlet so far, we've probably spent over $50,000. We should get quite a good percentage of that back if we get the numbers. Hey, Rodney, that looks great. And this is Rodney's partner, Joe who's helping share the risk for this one-off show. <laughs> WOMAD's eclectic light orchestra brought together some 50 artists from throughout the world and some homegrown talent like Archie Roach and Ruby Hunter. <laughs> There was a Scottish all-female country punk band called the Well-Oiled Sisters. Tanzanian reggae come rhythm and blues king Remy Ongala and the Super Matta Miller Band. <laughs> and this high-spirited family troupe of North Indian singers. <laughs> Thirty-six hours after setting out from Perth, Womad's caravan reached Pimba, and it was party time. What we really wanted to do was to provide them with, I suppose, a different experience of Australia than just seeing the road between an airport and a hotel and a hotel and a concert site, and we certainly achieved that. Some in the crowd had come almost as far as the train, and fortunately for Pimba's new music promoter, there were plenty of them. Showtime. It's all happening. Yeah, it's, now look at that, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 people. We are more than pleased. We are, we are wrapped. The rest of the evening was one pleasant surprise after another. In fact, the show went down so well out here that organisers are already talking about coming back in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> 